welcome. People are starting to come on now. No point talking to no one, yeah? Welcome along to your Thursday morning yoga. Hopefully everyone saw the change in time as well. Nine o'clock, not eight o'clock. Figured that maybe a few more people after two weeks of this might find eight o'clock a little too early, but you never know. I'm sure there's still some people who are up and working, but um, if you did have to work, go a little bit in, maybe you can still take a break now and join in. So great to see you. I'm sitting in a nice patch of sun here. Maybe some of you can see that. Lovely, streaming through my windows. Just what I need to practice uh, for the next 45 odd minutes in here. So let me know who's out there. How are you feeling today? I must admit myself, I'm super tight. Super tight in my back, my hips, my hip flexors, my hamstrings. All those areas just seem to be really tight at the moment. I think it's all the walking I'm doing. Walking, running, I don't know, cleaning maybe. Too much cleaning, should stop that cleaning, hey? So yeah, so today, last week we did a fairly, um, a fairly movement focused class. So today what we're gonna do is, yes, we'll still be moving and there'll still be work on mobility, um, but there'll also be a lot of work on, personally, because I'm feeling tight in those areas, a lot of work around the hips, the hamstrings, and the lower back. So um, hopefully that suits all you guys. Maybe there's some of you who are watching that have been doing the uh, lunchtime hip classes with Gary, Stu, Mackenzie. They have been looking hard out. Um, so unless you've been doing other stretching, I'm sure you're feeling it in the same places. Lots of uh, worked tired muscles maybe, yeah? Right, what's the time? Where's my clock? It is bang on nine o'clock. I normally have a clock sitting here in front of me. So uh, if you see me looking, I'm looking at the TV because the TV's on so I can see it on the TV. So it is nine o'clock, so I will just start into my normal class type description. It is a yoga class today, guys. Uh, won't be too uh, challenging on the movement side of things, um, but if at any point you find something too, uh, too challenging for you, or it's just not working for you, you feel any pain, or you know abnormal discomfort beyond just that sort of taking the muscles and the joints into a deep place, um, feel free to come out of any of the stretches and just find one that suits you, or you can always just stretch out in your child's pose and take a rest. Okay, so just remember that through the class. Um, hi, Bill. Oh, great. Excellent. Um, so you're nothing is set in concrete. Yeah, I, I don't know what you're doing out there. Um, so like I say, just find a space, find a place that works for you. That's probably the most important thing that you can think about through this class. Good thing is because you are actually working out in the privacy of your own home, wherever you are, you have no one looking at you to see how you look. So there's no judgment. It's just all about you finding what fits you. Yep, so on that note, oh, hi Jo, how are you doing? On that note, we are going to get started. Yep, let me know if you want me to go. I've got a little bit of background music going there. I can turn it up a little bit louder. Just, or you can turn your own music up in the, um, in the background if you want something that suits you. A little bit more relaxing for you. Yep, so we are going to start in a standing position this morning. So come to anywhere, nice patch of sun, somewhere where you've got some space in front or beside you and uh, above you. Set your feet hip width apart, just soften those knees and just slightly tuck your pelvis forward. So we don't want to be standing with our bottoms sticking out behind us. We want to find that nice neutral spine and then take your shoulders down and back. So just a really nice, strong, standing posture. Palms facing towards me. Shoulders blades pulling down the back so you can feel your neck lengthening a little bit. Drawing your belly button in towards your spine. 
grounding through your feet and lengthening up through the crown of your head. Nice, so we'll just take a couple of breaths there before we move on. Nice big full breaths. Using your inhale to think of lengthening. So really draw that inhale right up from the feet all the way up through the crown of the head. And then as you exhale, the same. So it comes down through the crown of the head and grounds you back to your feet. We'll take one more like that. Nice. So on your next inhale breath, move the arms and reach them up towards the ceiling. And then as you exhale, bending the knees a lot, fold forward. All the way, so bend the knees as much as you need to to get the fingertips on the ground. Take an in and out breath here. And then on the next inhale breath, drive back through those feet to rise all the way back up to standing. And then in, exhale and bend those knees, sitting back into your chair. So quite a strong held posture here to create some heat. Inhale back up. Exhale, fold forward, bending those knees, letting those hamstrings ease into it. Take a full inhale and exhale here. And then inhale, drive through the feet, sweep the arms up. Reach through those fingertips, exhale, sit into that chair. Hollow the belly out and pull the hips slightly forward, just so you're not arching through that back. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, fold forward. This time on your inhale, take a halfway lift. So slide the hands up the shins, flatten out that back, stretch out through the crown of the head. Exhale, fold back forward. Inhale, sweep the arms up. And exhale, sit into your chair. Nice work. Inhale, rise up. Exhale, fold, maybe starting to take the bend out of those legs a little bit. Inhale, halfway lift, so lengthen. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, rising up. So we're moving a little bit quicker now. Exhale, sit into that chair. We're going to do a few more rounds. Inhale, rise up. Big reach, open the chest, exhale, fold forward. Inhale, halfway lift. Draw the shoulders down the back, lengthen the neck. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, sweep up. And exhale, sit into your chair. Inhale, rise up. This time as you exhale, tighten up through your glutes and take a little back bend, driving your hips forward. Inhale, come back centre. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, sweep up. And exhale, sit chair. We'll do one more round with the back bend. So inhale up. Squeeze tight through those glutes. Exhale, little back bend. Hips come forward. Inhale, come back center. Exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Bending the knees as much as you need to to get that nice flat back. Exhale, fold. Inhale, sweep the arms up. And exhale, sit into your chair. Now we'll just hold our chair for a full breath in and out. And then inhale, rise up. And then as you exhale, one arm forward, one arm back, twist to the right. Inhale, come back centre, reaching up. 
And then to the left, exhale. One arm forward, one arm back. Soft knees, pelvis slightly tucked. Inhale up. Do one more time each side. Exhale, twist. Inhale up. And exhale, twist to the left. Last time. Keeping the hips square. Inhale the arms up. And then as you exhale, step the feet out nice and wide, bringing the arms open. Soften those knees. So just a wee quarter squat here. Now take a big inhale breath. And then as you exhale, draw those elbows in as you squat down lower. Inhale, reaching up. Straightening up through those legs. And exhale, draw the elbows in, down. Think of back pockets. Draw them in. Inhale, up. Reaching high, shoulders down. Exhale and draw. So let's get a little bit more heat going. Gently opening those hips. So as you squat down on that exhale breath, think about those knees heading towards your little toes. So pushing them backwards to get a nice opening in the inner thigh and the hips. At the same time, we're getting a really nice conditioning squeeze into our back and lifting our chest and opening up towards the ceiling. Now you guys are all moving with your own breath pattern out there. So it's an inhale to rise and an exhale to lower. So you might be moving slower or quicker than me. We'll do a few more. Use those arms strongly, reach those fingertips, so be really dynamic. <sighs> nice work. Just one more. Good, reach the arms up one more time, and then lower them down on an exhale. Good. So I want you to turn your right toes towards, well away from you. If you've got a mat down, it'll be the short edge of your mat. And your back foot turns in so that the back edge of your foot is parallel to the back edge of your mat. So we're going to be coming into some warrior two flows. So when you bend your front knee, just take a little test now. See that the knee is over the ankle. If it's not, if it's looking more like that, you might need to shorten your stance. If it's looking like it's going over the toes, you might need to lengthen your stance a little bit. So arms come up to shoulder height, one back, one forward, looking down your front arm, bringing the shoulders back over the hips. So really getting that nice opening first of all, just into that front part of the body. Your front knee is heading towards your little toe of your front foot. So we just want to avoid it caving inwards. So dynamically push it outwards. Nice work. So from here I want you to take an in-breath and straighten the front leg and lift the arms up. Reach to the ceiling. And then as you exhale, dropping back down. Straight down, shoulders over hips. Push through the back edge of the foot. Inhale, up. And exhale down. Inhale up. Belly's in. Drawing in towards the spine and your hips are slightly tucked forward. Inhale up. And exhale down. Nice job. We'll do a couple more. Inhale up and then keep that leg straight as you exhale. Just turn that front foot now to become the back foot and turn the back foot to become the front foot. Once again, just take a little test here. It should be about the same, but you can be different on both sides. Okay, so just check for that alignment. Bring the arms up on an inhale 
and then exhale, drive down into this leg, opening the hips, inhale up. So I just want you to flow with your breath here for another five or six rounds. As you're doing these, I'm just gonna talk through just the points you wanna make a note of. So really press strongly through that back edge of your foot. Really focus on that front knee, heading towards the little toe of that front foot. Think about peeling your hips open, keeping the shoulders over the hips so your torso nice and upright. And then as you move through these last couple of rounds, just seeing if there's a little bit more that you can sink down into it. Good. One more round. Nice work. Bring the arms back up on an inhale. And then as you exhale, turn both toes now facing the front. Exhale those arms down. Right, so you want your um, ankles to be approximately under your wrists. The toes face forwards and make pigeon toe them just a little bit. So turning your big toes inwards just a little bit so that the um, outside edge of both feet looks like it's parallel to the front edge of your mat. Okay, so take those hands onto your hip creases, roll the shoulders back, soften the knees, take a big in-breath, and then as you breathe out, fold forward, so hinge from your hips, keeping the back nice and flat, until maybe you can get your fingertips on the floor. Now for the more flexible of you, you might not need that softness in those knees, okay? So some of you might have that softness in the knees, fingertips. Some of you may be able to straighten those legs out. Avoid locking the knees, so there's always a little bit of give in them. You're not locking them back. But we're all just here on our fingertips. Good. Now if it's there for you, you can start to soften through your elbows. Bringing the crown of your head now down towards the mat. So hold at that point for a couple of breaths, whether you're just in soft elbows or whether you've managed to get the crown of your head down towards the mat. And then if it's there for you, you can walk your hands back starting to fold more forward, relax the head and neck and just really feel gravity and the weight of your torso just drawing you down closer as you lift your sit bones up to the ceiling. So really creating lots of length down through the back of the legs but also into the back. So a nice hanging feeling, but you've got that support with your hands or your fingertips on the floor. Big breaths into your back for me. We'll take a few more breaths here. And then if you have walked your hands back behind your feet, just bring them back forward. And everyone just rise up onto their fingertips a little bit. Lengthen out that spine, lengthen out through the crown of the head. Just for a couple of breaths. And then place your right hand flat on the floor in the centre, approximately the centre of your chest. Underneath the shoulders. Nice work. And then on an inhale breath, take your left arm up towards the ceiling. So we're pushing the floor away from us as we're rotating up to the ceiling. Now if you need to rise up onto fingertips, that's okay. 
going for a really nice big twist. Looking up towards your top hand if it's there for you. If not, you can just keep looking directly ahead so that your neck doesn't feel like it's straining. Take one more breath in. And as you exhale, bring that left hand down to replace the right hand. And then inhale, take the right hand up. Big twist. Be strong through your feet. So keep pressing through the outside edges of those feet. Keep lifting your hips towards the ceiling. Hollow your belly out. Take one more inhale here. And then exhale it back to the floor. Place your hands in your hip creases, soften your knees, and inhale your way up. And then exhale, just heel toe your feet in. Nice, and just take some shoulder rolls here. Good. Just relax the shoulders, relax the legs. And take them forward. Okay, so we're going to move back into a plank position. So you can stay facing if you want to, but it is actually easier to lock when you can turn your head to the side rather than having to lift the chin up to see what's going on. So bring your hands down to the floor and step back into your plank position. Now you can be on your knees. I'm going to give you lots of options here or you can be up on your toes. So you're in your nice, strong plank position. So hands are under the shoulders. Have a look down and make sure your fingers are spread nice and wide. So lots of weight into the finger pads and the knuckles. Push the floor away from you. So from here, we're going to be stepping through into a lunge. Now, if you're in your kneeling plank position, you can step your foot through, or you can push back onto your knees and step your foot through if that's easier for you. If you're in your full plank position, soften those knees a little bit and step your right leg through. So any of those options is fine to get that leg through. And if it doesn't get all the way through, just give it a helping hand, okay? Once you've stepped through, everyone drop their back knee and just check that your front knee is over the front ankle. Flatten out your back toe. And then on a big in-breath, sweep the arms up. And we're in our kneeling lunge. So we're now starting to get more opening in through the hip. So tuck your pelvis slightly forward and sink nice and low. Reaching up to the ceiling, shoulders drop down. So lifting your chest as much as you're sinking. So stay strong through your base. Try not to collapse, hips tucked. One more breath in and out here. And then lower the hands to the floor, one on either side of that front foot, and bring your weight back so you're stretching out into the front leg. So if you keep the front toe pointed, it gives you a nice stretch up through the front of the ankle and in that front shin a little bit as well. And also into the hamstring. So keep pushing those front toes down as much as you can manage. Nice flat back. So you can be on your fingertips. You can be flat hands on the floor. The other thing that's quite handy as well, is if you've got a couple of cans, you can have your hands on top of those. They create just that little bit of height, just like a yoga block would. You may have a yoga block available to you. But just maintain that nice flat back. 
We'll take one more breath in and out and then we'll move back into our plank position. So you can stay kneeling and just move your leg back or you can bring your weight forward. Hands on either side of that foot, pop up off your back toe, back heel and step back into your plank. Good, we'll take a breath in and out here. Nice strong plank position again, kneeling or full. And then I want you to bring your left foot forward. So moving through the other leg. Everyone dropping their back toe. Back knee, I keep saying toe for knee. Drop your back knee, flatten out your toes. Look for that alignment of knee over ankle and inhale the arms up. And then exhale, drop the shoulders down the back. Tuck your back hip. Draw up through the front side of your body. Reaching those fingertips skyward. So spread them, be dynamic, be strong. All done with a smile, yeah? Keep tucking that back hip. Take one more breath in and out here. And then lower those hands to the floor and come back into your hamstring stretch. Toes stay down this one. Nice flat back. One more breath in and out here. And then bring your weight back forward, moving back into your plank position, whether that be kneeling or through full. Take a breath in and out here. And then step your right leg back through, through kneeling. Now you've got the option here of dropping the back knee like we did on the first set, or you can stay up in full lunge. Your choice. So extend out through your back heel or tuck your back hip if you're in kneeling. Place your left hand just somewhere beside your right foot and open your right arm to the ceiling. So we're in twisting lunge. So front on, hand flat or propped up on fingertips, opening up. And if you're in kneeling, you've just got your back toes down, tucking your back hip and opening up. So full kneeling. Push the floor away from you with your bottom hand, reaching up with your top fingers. Take one more breath in and out here. And then bring yourself out of that twist, one hand on either side of the front foot. Now we're gonna move into that hamstring stretch again. Once again, you can be kneeling like we did our first round in, or you can move straight back into it from your full lunge position. Now you might need to rise up onto your fingertips here in the full lunge position, or you may be able to flatten your hands. Just make sure you're not rounding through your back. You stay nice and long. The back heel won't touch the floor, it's not meant to. Bit of a stronger stretch now though, through that front hamstring. And remember if you're kneeling, we're just here. Toes still pointed. Sorry guys, my screen just, my device just fell off. <laughs> and my dog's doing a we down my dog for you all. <laughs> yep, that's good. Yep. 
Sorry about that. Okay, bring your weight back forward and move yourself back into your plank. <laughs> Might have to uh, get a better piece of sellotape for next time. <laughs> Take a breath in and out here. And we'll move through the other side. So bring your left leg through. Remember dropping down that back knee if you want to or staying up in your full lunge, nice long line out from crown of the head through that back heel. So really think about opening the hips here, sinking as low as you're comfortable. And then place the right hand somewhere beside that foot. It doesn't have to be super close, about under the shoulder is good. And then twisting lunge, open up to the ceiling. Nice work. So if you're finding you're not getting much of a twist, just rise up a little more. The more space you give yourself, the more you're going to be able to twist. And if you're down kneeling, same thing, you can rise up onto your fingertips and be opening, or you might have your hand flat on the floor. But reach through the top fingers and push the floor away from you with the bottom hand. Take one more breath in and out. And then lower back down, one hand on either side of that front foot and moving into your hamstring stretch. So either from the full lunge position or from the kneeling lunge position. makes any difference to where you feel the stretch or the intensity of the stretch. So just drawing the left hip back. Might feel a little better. Might bring a level of intensity to the stretch that you didn't maybe have when you first came into it. Take one more breath in and out. And then bring the weight back forward and step back into your last plank. Nice work. We'll take a couple of breaths here in this plank position this time. So in and out. Take a breath in. And then as you breathe out, take your way back into downward dog. Good, and we'll settle into downward dog just for, I don't know, maybe five or ten breaths. We're nice and warm now, but you're more than welcome to move those feet. Walk your dog, pushing one heel at a time towards the mat, if that feels good for you. It gives a nice, I find it gives a really nice stretch into my calves. So I quite like doing this, but you're more than welcome to just hold your dog static. Don't worry if your heels don't hit the floor. Don't worry if your knees are bent. We want to get the hips nice and high, the spine long, and the chest towards the thighs. So hips high, spine long, chest to thighs. Once that's nailed, then you can just start to look at straightening those legs and letting the heels drop. about halfway through. So we'll go for another five cycles of breath. If it gets too much, you can always just drop down into your child's pose. I normally wouldn't hold a downward dog for this long, but we're nice and warm. We've done a lot of movement. So it's a good chance to really get some heat going before we move into a little bit more static work on the floor. Shoulders away from the ears. Take one more breath in and out. And then bring your weight forward and drop down to your knees. Well done. Okay, so I want you to 
spin yourself around or just find a position that you're seated in. And I want you to have your right leg crossed over your left leg. So we're just in a cross-legged position, but your right leg is in front. Yep. Whether or not that's your comfortable seat, don't worry, because we do do both sides. So just flex the feet a little bit. Sitting up nice and tall. Now, if this, at this stage, if you do find the seated cross uncomfortable, you're more than welcome to either roll up the back of your mat or prop yourself up on a rolled up towel. It can be quite nice as well. And it does just sometimes make it easier for those knees just to fall down towards the mat. But I'll leave that up to you. So take a big breath in. And as you breathe out, just take a nice side body lean over to the right. But don't worry if you went the other way because we do your sides. So reaching out through that top arm, softening into your bottom elbow. You can look underneath your arm if you want to, or you can just stay looking straight ahead. Keep those knees relaxed. Next in breath, come back to the center and exhale, float your way over to the other side. So keeping your hip grounded and reaching up. So you want your right hip grounded and your right arm reaching. Soften into that elbow, reaching up. Looking under if you want to. And then next inhale, come back to the centre. And exhale, float the arms down. Nice work. And then breathe in, reach the arms back up in front of you. And exhale, reaching forward. So a nice forward bend now, reaching as far forward as you can. Edge your way forward and then drop the hands down and relax the head. Nice big breaths into your back for a couple more. So big in breath and then a big sinking out breath. And then inhale, walk your hands slowly back towards you. Now keeping your right leg in front, take your left leg, so you sort of look like a, I don't know, it's sort of like a 90-90, so you want your front knee and shin at about a 90 degree angle, and then you want your back knee and your back shin on about a 90 degree angle. Take your right hand and place it behind you, leaning back a little bit, and then sweep your left arm up as you lift your hips. So I really want you to think about driving that left hip up. You can adjust your back hand and reach it right back. So you want to feel a strong stretch right down that left hip. So push the floor away from you with your back hand. Reach up and back with your top arm and really drive those hips up and forward. Really nice opening through that front hip into those lower abs and right up that front side of the body. Take one more breath in and as you exhale just lower back down nice and slowly. Nice work. And then we change sides so I want you to bring now, we had our right foot crossed in front, now you have your left foot crossed in front. So flex those feet slightly. Set yourself back up, take a big inhale, breath. And then as you exhale, take that nice side body to the left. Softening down, reaching high. Ooh, 
move a little bit quicker on the side so we can get a nice decent front hip stretch. Inhale back to the center and exhale, float to the other side. Inhale, center, and then exhale, forward, reaching as long as you can. So always go for the length first. Once you've reached as far as you can, lower the hands and just let the head and neck relax. Seeing if it's there for you on this side, it may or may not be. And then letting it go, coming back through the center, change the cross of your legs. Take a big inhale breath, roll those shoulders down the back, clasp your hands behind your back, 
And then as you exhale, lift your chest right towards the ceiling, looking up. And if it's there for you, you can move your hands away from your bottom, but a really nice chest opener. This is actually what we're going to finish with, is this nice front body opening. So really lift and lengthen, drawing up, creating lots of space across the collarbone, into the chest, especially if you're still working through this time and you're spending time hunched over, you're possibly less than ideal workstation. Lengthen. You can do this stretch at any stage through your day just to bring that opening. It feels nice, but it's very good for your posture. And then lower back down, nice and slowly, nice and gently. Let the arms go, just give them a little shake, making sure those shoulders are nice, relaxed. And we're gonna finish with three big energizing breaths. So big breath up. You can look up towards your fingertips if you want and then exhale, float them down. Two more, so big inhale, reaching lifting, lengthening, and exhale, really bringing in lots of fresh air so that you start your day energized and open. Big breath in, this is your last one. This time when you breathe out, bring your hands back through heart center and just hold there. Thanks so much for joining me today. It was lovely to have you. I hope you enjoyed that class, opening up through the hips and the hamstrings. It's gonna be a lovely day, go and enjoy it, go and get some fresh air. Any questions, comments or feedback, please feel free to post them. I think I've now worked out how to uh, be able to comment back as myself rather than rec center. I had a few um, fails there, so I think I've got it sorted out. But yeah, thanks so much again guys, have a great day, namaste.